Sophie and I'm back with another Public Lands 101 video. Today we're continuing our discussion of the Sagebrush Rebellion. So if you haven't watched our last video, be sure to check that one out first. It'll give you the background on the first wave of this public land transfer movement. Our last video left off in the 1980s, but by mid-decade, the first wave of highly active Sagebrush Rebellion protesters have largely calmed down. But this wouldn't last all that long. By the 1990s, another wave of anti-public land sentiment was brewing and none other than Catron County, New Mexico. Between 1990 and 1992, Catron County passed 21 ordinances that violated federal land management policies. They declared grazing on public land, a private property, and a civil right, attempted to give the county control of land management, and even gave local law enforcement the authority to arrest public lands officials for violating these ordinances. This spurred what is sometimes referred to as the county independence movement. This movement came to a head in Nye County, Nevada, where they passed a resolution declaring all public lands within the county property of the state. On July 4, 1994, Nye County Commissioner Richard Carver and a group of armed protesters bulldozed through a closed Forest Service road. This was also the year that now infamous Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy just decided to stop paying fees to graze hundreds of his cows on public land. Sagebrush II, as it was known, eventually fizzled out in the early 2000s, marked by the failure of the Jarbage Wilderness Protest, in which a group called the Jarbage Shovel Brigade attempted to reopen a closed forest service road in Elko County, Nevada, but were met with low turnout and local disinterest. So the Sagebrush Rebellion kept mostly to a simmer throughout the next decade, and it would stay that way until 2012. Utah was the first state to make a move in the latest wave of the Sagebrush Rebellion. In 2012, they passed and signed into law a bill demanding the transfer of millions of acres of public land to the state. Similar bills were considered and even passed in several western states like Arizona, but none of these became law. Then in 2014, after about 20 years of illegally grazing on public land, the Bureau of Land Management finally impounded Clive and Bundy's 900 cattle from land close to grazing in Nevada. Bundy and a group of armed militants fought to stop the multi-day removal, assaulting and pointing guns at officers and kicking police dogs. Anti-government militias would make their reappearance several times throughout 2014 and 2015 in protests and occupations related to the Bundy standoff and other BLM land disputes. Then came 2016 and Sagebrush 3 seemed to be in full swing with the occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon. Clive and Bundy's son, Ammon, and his heavily armed extremist crew came to fight the sentencing of two local ranchers who, on top of violating several public land management policies throughout the years, had recently committed arson on public land twice, once to cover up poaching. The militants claimed the refuge as their own and harassed the nearby town of Burns, whose residents urged an end to the occupation. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask you, how many citizens of Hardy County do we have in here? Now I'm going to ask for the same show of hands of how many people want to work this out peacefully and would like these folks to go home. In one instance, the militants tore down a fence trying to give a local rancher access to the refuge. But the rancher, who didn't want the fence taken down, was left to repair it on his own. That's how out of touch these folks were with the local community. Eventually, after 40 days of destruction, vandalism, and violence, the occupation ended. Since then, calls for the transfer of public land to individual states have continued, especially under the new administration. Stay tuned to next week's video, where we'll break down exactly why public land transfer is a bad deal for public land users.